for one thing, the first eight or nine games of this stretch, they generally played horrible teams and teams with most of their players out. That helped. So that helped a lot. However, the last three games, they played Denver, Atlanta, and Philly. Three good teams, generally healthy. Each each had a guy or two out. But like last night, the Celtics had Marcus Smart left the game in the second quarter with an ankle injury. It looks like it could be not very good. We'll see how long he's out. He turned it pretty bad. He stepped on Joel Embiid's foot. And Robert Williams, who's, in my opinion, should be in consideration for most approved players this year. He's been fantastic for them. He didn't play because of a calf injury. So they were down. You know, two of their starters for most of the game, and they, they only like got like they only got like eight players. To yeah. Be honest with you, well, they so here, so here, so some of it is the schedule. Until very recently, was very soft. That's part of it. But their defense has been good all season and has gotten even better of late. Mm-hmm. That's one part. Second part is for these last three games, this trade for Derek White has a chance to be a transformational trade for the Celtics team. Because I wrote this big story back in November about where the team was at when they were struggling early in the year. And most of the story is about how the Celtics needed to surround Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown with the right kind of players for them to succeed. In short, those are players that make quick decisions, can play at both ends, and don't hold on to the ball. Derek White does all those things at a super high level. He is Greg exactly, Popovich school. The Greg Popovich right. school. That's pass right. or shoot two seconds pass point, or shoot. point point five second decisions right catch okay, the ball catch the ball and make a decision Derek when white takes four times too long <laughs> <laughs> Derek white Derek white plays like that and he has immediately come in he's walked right into the closing lineup him and Marcus smart in the backcourt Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum on the wings Robert Williams at center those are five awesome defensive players there's zero weak links there you could switch across positions They're all big and physical and fast. So that has been a huge thing. And the other thing is, frankly, they just stopped playing bad players. Like the Celtics the past couple of years have been playing a lot of bad players. And they excise Dennis Schroeder. They excise Romeo Langford in these trades. And Ime Udoka is now playing basically seven and a half guys when his team's healthy. It's got... His starting lineup, which has dominated all year, he just hasn't played it much, without Horford and Robert Williams and then Marcus Martin, the two stars on the wings. And now Derek White and Grant Williams, who's been fantastic off the bench. He's shooting 44% from three this year and is a really good defensive player. He's lost a bunch of weight. He's gotten a lot quicker. And then he's having Peyton Pritchard play a little bit, who's a pesky defender and is a good spot-up shooter and doesn't need the ball. So those eight guys know how to play. They fit together. And all of a sudden, like, I went into that game last night thinking that the six, the a Celtic Sixers series would be pretty interesting because the Sixers don't have anybody to guard a good wing player and the Celtics have two of them. And you come out of that game last night. Well, wait a no minute. James- they, 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 can guard. Yeah. Well, can guard. But here's the thing about Matisse Thibel. He's a really good defensive player, but Matisse Thibel is not a guy that you're going to put on a player and he's going to score five points. That's not what his D- Daryl Morey's got him second in defensive player of the year voting right behind uh, yes. Joel. Daryl, yes, Daryl, <laughs> Daryl, the best player on Daryl's team wins MVP every single year, whether they deserve to win it or not. Batiste is a really good defensive player, but his his skills on defense are in help defense and in crashing passing lanes and in disrupting plays. They're not. He's not like Tony Allen or Kawhi Leonard or one of right. these guys where you like put him on a wing guy and say that guy's going to score five points, right? Like, that's not his thing. And Danny Green is not that player anymore. And now they're starting Tyrese Maxey and James Harden together in the backcourt. That's going to be a problem defensively. So this Boston team, like, when you get in the playoffs, right, what is the what is the recipe for success? Have a really good defense and have guys that can go get their own shot. And even when the Celtics were playing badly, I thought they had a chance to be a better playoff team than a regular season team. Well, they had seven or eight good guys with a really good defense and two guys that can score. And now they're playing great and have that same formula. I would say the ability to get a basket in a half court offensive setting, which Tatum is literally built for. He just doesn't always. Him and Jalen don't always make great decisions, but they're capable of scoring 30 on just about anybody. And that's true. If If Tatum got hot at the right time, the way that this team defends. If Tatum got hot at the right time, I would say that they could beat anybody. 
They well, got and, a shot. And, and and both Tatum and you know these guys have proven it. They proved it at a very young age. This got a ton of playoff that, experience. Yeah, went deep. You know, went to the Eastern Conference Finals when they were puppies. And you know, you talked a lot, uh, Wendy, about Tatum's shot selection on the year, bomb temps about that, and 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 his shot luck. You know, expected field goal percentage versus what it was. The dude's shooting 50% from the floor, 38% from three over the yep. last 12 games, yep. averaging about 28 a game. Yep. He's looking, I mean, he's looking like himself again. Well, look, sure. like I thought that Tatum was going to be like contending for first team all NBA this year. And so that was my expectation. And if yeah. he continues to put up those numbers, that will be a first team all NBA like player. So yep. uh, my frustration with Tatum was because my expectations were so high. I, I think the world of his uh, makeup and skill set. So, and I do think we'll the one thing to watch with them, they're not a very good shooting team. When they hit shots, they're basically unbeatable, but they got a lot of streaky well, shooters. Jason Tatum is typically a very good shooter, but they got a lot of other guys that are very up and down shooting wise. Marcus Tate, Smart kind of epitomizes the yes. Celtics shooting and experience. Derek, and Derek White is similar in that. Like he, he's a guy that you think is a better shooter than he is percentage wise. Um, but they, you know, if those guys are making shots, it totally changes where they're at because their defense is always going to be good. Tatum went through a two week span earlier this year where he didn't make a three, whatever it was, you know, 30 some in a row. Yeah, I think so, he missed 20 in a row. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll see. I don't, I'm not ready to sit there and, 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 you know, move Milwaukee from my favorite ad or anything, but it, it, I think it, it's worth noting. And I really liked the Derek white trade. I know they gave up you know, a couple of things in that, in that uh, trade that, you know, you may regret later, but I, I really like that trade. The Spurs just don't trade players and especially players that are young, but they, they wanted to clear out some spots, some space. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.